this is Kehwe, a remote area in the district of Cusco, in the heart of the Peruvian Andes. At 4,000 meters above sea level, the lack of rain and resources make this one of the Earth's most inhospitable places. Nature here is cruel to those who do not know how to use the few opportunities it offers. Its inhabitants certainly know how to. They are used to living in the middle of this bleak upland. Victoriano lives quite close by. He is a Chakaruwak, a bridge builder and the main person in charge of Keswachaki's renewal. Vidal is Victoriano's son. He is studying art in Lima and only comes during holiday time. <laughs> Victoriano's dream is for his son to carry on the family tradition. But Vidal seems to have other ideas. Like many young migrants, he is torn between the comforts of the city and the harsh plain. His wife, Jennifer, keeps house and looks after their daughter, Paloma. With their husbands away, women take on the men's work and the jobs assigned to each family by the community. Rural drift among young people offers hope for the economy. However, it also puts family stability and a traditional lifestyle at risk. Permission is asked of the Apus, the mountain spirits, for each activity. Daily life here is full of rituals reflecting people's relationship with the environment. Balance is the essence of Pachamama. Each intervention by humankind in nature must be carefully gauged. Cayetano is the Paco, the local shaman or priest. He treats the sick and oversees rituals. He also decides when to harvest crops and sorts out rows between neighbors. The spiritual leader is the only one allowed by the Apos to set up at the ritual table. This includes offerings dedicated to the Pachamama by the villagers. Coca leaves, alcohol, tobacco, corn and other products. Important Andean rituals always require an animal to be sacrificed. Fire is the mouth through which Pachamama is nourished. Blood is essential to ensure successful harvests and the fertility of livestock. Also, to soothe the apples and drive away misfortunes. Jennifer prepares the watia, a way of cooking food by using an oven carved in the ground. For the children, work is a game that will soon teach them to feel useful. This is what Paloma is doing, her neighbor Valentine too. Today he skips school. 
he'd rather be here and learn from the Chakaruwak. Victoriano has collected enough coya. It is time to lay it out in the sun before preparing it next day. Koya has many other uses in daily life. For example, one of them is as a mold for making cheeses. Put in the cashier, Sometimes living together every day gives rise to differences between the generations. Agriculture and livestock for personal use are the key activities. At this altitude, it is not easy to grow crops or find fresh pastures to feed cattle. In the last few years, the rainy season has been getting shorter. Erosion and drought make this place a harsh, dusty territory where life seems to be impossible. But the same land that denies people its bounties conceals a treasure deep in the earth that humans found in the Andes thousands of years ago. The potato is the main food source at this altitude. It is grown in small family plots called chagras. There can be up to 300 hardy varieties of potato in these plots, known to the Incas and their predecessors. The diet is also supplemented by small amounts of cereals and dairy products from cows, sheep and particularly llamas and alpacas, the only animals native to these high plains. Mm -hmm. 
Most of the day is spent moving around these vast spaces, taking the cattle to graze. This also includes the children. There is only one school for the whole area, and some have a two-hour walk to get to class. When they come back, they help their parents on the land. Coca leaves are an essential source of energy and a remedy for altitude sickness. Although more usual in the humid jungle areas, not at this latitude, people of the Altiplano are never without it. To extract its most active properties, it is mixed with yifta, a type of limestone. This releases the tiny amount of cocaine in the leaves in just a few seconds. But while this substance is quickly eliminated, the body makes the most of the minerals and vitamins essential for its survival. Victoriano must braid 40 arms lengths of quechua. That means roughly 70 meters. This laborious task will take him several hours. Women are not allowed to be a chakarurwak, but Paloma will soon learn the braiding technique and at the same time something that is much deeper and significant. The Keshwa made of two straws and the braiding method reflect an essential part of the Andean mindset. The world is a system of opposites that complement each other that keep the flame of life burning. Masculine and feminine, light and darkness, life and death. This duality is the driving force of the universe, an energy that is in constant flux, dividing and multiplying to form more complex realities. Like all the universe, Keswachaka is also built from multiplying and dividing its original dual source, the Keshwa. The afternoon goes by with the rhythm of a working day. Victoriano has finished his quechua. 
Despite being a Chakarouak, Victoriano's family have the same austere lifestyle as their neighbors. But even so, they are lucky. A couple of cows and their calves is more than a lot of people can afford. Both animals and humans share the same resources. The calves must not feed more than necessary. Peasant families are the basic economic and social unit in the Andes. Today, Vidal is making chuño, a traditional method of freeze-drying potatoes using the sun and frost at night. This way food can be kept for years. From her vantage point, Victoriano's mother, Cecilia, seems to blend in perfectly with her surroundings. She watches as the next generation takes charge of the house. 